the Sat Yogi's one task is to abide in silence. The silence of the presence of the Supreme. And through the silence, to erase all traces of the sanskaras of the ego. Today it is common to speak of being in altered states, but it is the ego that is the altered state. And the Satyogi is one who returns to the original state, the egoless presence of the one self. It is through this simple refusal to enter into that low vibrational frequency in which thoughts are produced thoughts that are based upon an identification with body and therefore are produced as efforts to satisfy desire and to flee from fear and yet which through their production produce states in which there are fearful objects and objects of desire, both internally within the mind itself as subtle objects of fantasy and which are provoked to appear externally. And often the same object will be an object of desire and of fear. And thus the ego as an altered state cannot comprehend reality as it is, but can only project its own fantasies and believe in those which include fantasies about its own self-image, self-concept, none of which have any relationship to the real. And therefore the ego's habitat is referred to as maya, illusion. And this illusion produces karma, which produces suffering, which produces a world at war, a world with every kind of degradation, perversion, and forms of suffering that are attendant upon lower chakra consciousness. That is considered the norm. And yet it is this normality that is the cause of the destruction of our world. To bring about a world in which happiness is possible again, in which love is possible, in which truth can be victorious over the lie and justice over injustice and oppression. And purity over impurity. The vibrational frequency of the noosphere, the collective consciousness of the planet, must again be raised to that level in which all of those 
forms that are able to receive the consciousness of Gaia are able to attune to a vibrational frequency that brings peace, that brings the realization of unity and of an undivided consciousness in which the full potentialities of our capacity to know and to feel are always resonating with the supreme reality that is the creative power that has brought this cosmos into being. To abide in that state in which we not only are receptive to the highest state of consciousness, but in which that state and its energies emanate from us as individual nodes of that consciousness requires the elimination of the interference pattern produced by the ego. because the ego can only emit signals of distress, trauma, aggression. And all of the other perversions of love and of being that produce an ongoing re-traumatization and therefore a reinforcement of ego defenses that then produce a continuing devolution of the capacity for trust and for social organization that is based upon love and goodness and innocence and the ability to live unguarded, undefended, without paranoia. But because paranoia is the basic signal of the ego, happiness and peace are precluded in ego consciousness. And so the Satyogi's duty, Satyogi's function within the planetary psychic economy is to emanate vibrational fields of goodness, of love, of trustworthiness. And not only to emanate such thought patterns but to live in that presence, in that consciousness, in which the highest values that emanate from the self become realized in action. And through which a new world is dreamed into being, a world that can function as a kingdom of heaven. And all traces of the hell realm of Kali Yuga can be eliminated. There is no other way to accomplish that. But to accomplish it, each one must be responsible for the elimination of all of the manifestations of the ego in the conscious and subconscious levels of each individual mind until the individual mind itself is transcended into that consciousness that is universal, cosmic, and transcendent of the cosmos. In 
order to do that, each yogi must be responsible for our psychic hygiene. We must not project any negativity upon anyone or upon oneself. We must not allow memories of past traumas to be projected into the present and the future. And we must eliminate that level of identification that produces body consciousness, which brings about those lower chakra tendencies of aggression, of lust, of insecurity, of power struggles, territoriality, and lack of compassion that are responsible for all of the negative karma that ensues in the world. And so <clears throat> whatever change we wish to happen in the world must start within. The yogi is one who rejects the idea of blaming another for one's suffering. Or even blaming oneself, because the real self does not suffer and cannot suffer and cannot produce suffering. <clears throat> and so the sat yogi does not waste time trying to change the ego, but to recognize that the ego is a delusion and to abide in that silence in which the Supreme Presence automatically descends into embodiment and produces peace in the physical soma in the psyche and in the soul. And once that Holy Spirit has become embodied, the telepathic connection with the source of the supreme intelligence, wisdom, love, and power become automatically connected and attuned and are able to be employed in life so that the will of that supreme intelligence becomes fulfilled both at the individual level and the planetary level and the cosmic level. As we all know, the ego tenaciously resists the silence, the stillness, the peace, the light, the beauty, the strength of the inner self. It prefers the pseudo versions of those qualities <clears throat> that can be produced through fantasies of the mind rather than through surrender to the real. But these fantasies produce only faulty versions of goodness that at their core are narcissistic and egocentric and unsustainable. And so the yogi learns not to deceive oneself. and not to give in to the ego's attempts <clears throat> to persuade through mental processes
one's consciousness to accept ideas that are not in one's highest and best interest or those of the collective consciousness. And the yogi knows that <clears throat> once one enters into the process of jnana, once one has become agnostic, a knower of the truth, one is held to a higher standard. And the karmic backlash for inaccurate thought, feeling, action leads to instant karmic corrective action at the external level and in the level of one's conscience. And so the yogi who is truly cognizant of the presence of God and the fact that we are under surveillance of God once we have entered into the path of higher consciousness, the ego can no longer deceive its own inner intelligence and discovers that there is now a force that leads the consciousness to fulfill its duties to itself, to the self, to recognize at all times that there is no other. There are only the infinite varieties of manifestations of the one. And to betray another is to betray the one. And to betray oneself is to betray the other. And to betray God is to enter a hell realm of suffering. And because the consequence of that is so extreme and the consequence of abiding in surrender to God is so extremely beautiful, so extremely filled with luminous, wise, loveful containment within the energy field of God's presence the satyogi will choose to abide always in every situation in that meditative centeredness in which the presence of God within is not disturbed. And one stays always in that connection that enables the current of energy that produces well-being and the highest karma and the highest capacity for relating in divine love to become one's natural habitat and one's new normal And as this vibrational frequency of the presence of the power of the God Self is fully embodied, all of the avataric potentialities become activated. And it is this awakening to the fact that the world that the body is in is a world that is 
an etheric production of consciousness itself, a collective intersubjective dream brings about the capacity through the network of connectivity of consciousnesses that are all abiding in that state of divine beauty to redream the world together. And it is this redreaming of the world that is the ultimate spiritual revolution. And it is this act of cosmic redreaming on the basis of the simple channeling of the divine supreme presence that fulfills our task and enables the consciousness to return to its transcendent source, having graduated from this school, having gained the wisdom and the purity and the power and the understanding of the nature of reality. that enables the transcendence of all worlds and all dualities of life and death and being and non-being. And the attainment of that highest realization of the self that has nothing more to learn. And has attained its own apotheosis. And so although there are substances that are now called entheogens, it is only through that meditative centering upon the God self within that produces the apotheogen that brings about a new creation, a new cosmos. and the fulfillment of all intentionality. May we succeed in completing our task of returning to the one supreme God self from which we have derived all of our experience and which is guiding us through the path of suffering and the transformation of suffering into wisdom to become healers of the world and guides for those lost souls who have not yet found the vibrational frequency that brings peace and that dissolves all traces of such suffering. so that the redreaming of this dream happens quickly and all of those souls who are suffering can be taken out of their misery. Let us do our work now without waiting for the sake of all.